Hi, my name is Mackenzie Crosby, and today we would like to graciously and inclusively welcome all of you to The Rock, and we hope you are having an amazing and blessed day. Isaiah 43, 1-3 says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. I am the Lord your God. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And don't forget that God is with you. Did you come this morning to give God glory? I tell you right where you are, go ahead and type it in the comments. Say, glory to our king. Did anybody come to give God glory? Yeah. Oh, come on. We're going to magnify the name of the Lord because he's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all honor. And he is worthy of the glory. So y'all vibe with us, all right? Yeah. Song real simple. It just says this right here. Glory, glory, glory to our king.
If you will, bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. God, we come to you and we ask that you watch over our children as they prepare to go back to school. Watch over our teachers, our administrators, and everyone making decisions about the safety and well-being of our children. God, we ask that you continue to cover them with a hedge of protection, God, as they log onto the computers, make sure they're able to focus, make sure their teachers understand what they are able to teach them. God, I pray for our parents, oh God, that they are able to be in strong mind as they help their students at home. God, I also pray for our community leaders, God, that as we make decisions that impact not only our children, but our essential workers, that they are making decisions that are rooted in love and rooted in Christ, oh God. God, I pray that you just continue to watch us and guide us and lead us in your perfect direction, oh God. God, we ask that you be our GPS, oh God. We need you to guide us, protect us, and keep us safe, oh God. Without you, we know that we are nothing, oh God. So I ask that you continue to just love on us and nurture us, oh God. And as we end this prayer, God, we give you all the praise, the glory. Amen. Hey, good morning, Rock You Church. Thank you for joining us here on this Sunday, August the 23rd, virtually wherever you are. I am glad to be with you talking about the Word of God. Man, I absolutely love digging into the Word and, and unpacking some things. This is the final part in our four-part series called Packages and Trash Talk, and I'm excited about this one as we kind of round this bad boy off and get to the conclusion of all that we have been studying. Man, if it's been good to you, man, put something in notes. Somebody say, it's been good. Somebody put it in the notes. It's been good. It's been good. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Now, listen, the, the other day I learned a new term. It's called cancel culture. Cancel culture. You know what it is? L listen, I, I read the definition. It says, cancel culture is defined as the popular practice of withdrawing support for a, a public figure or a company after they have done something considered objectionable or offensive. And, and this cancel culture is generally discussed as being performed on social media in the form of group shaming. Now, you know I always have some crazy story about my life. L let me tell you the latest thing that's going on. Uh, so my kids have iPads, and they have figured out this FaceTiming. So when I'm at work or if I'm out doing something, all of a sudden I'll hear the do 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 you know, the FaceTime uh, ringtone. And all of a sudden, here comes my four-year-old on my iPad. Dad, what are you doing? And I'm like, son, I'm at, I'm at work. And, and then as soon as I begin to engage him in conversation, guess what he does? Bloop, he hangs up. Now, he may call right back and I answer, and guess what he'll do again? Bloop, he'll hang up. And it's as if he was saying, I only wanted to engage with you for as long as I felt you were necessary, but I'm going to hang up because there's something else that has grabbed my attention. There's something else that is distracting me from what I was doing. So in essence, you are, bloop, canceled. Well, you know, the funny thing about that is we talk about cancel culture and canceling others and canceling companies and canceling everything else. But in the case of what we're talking about over the last four weeks and even today, I think that the canceling that happens more often than not is us canceling ourselves. We cancel our dreams. We cancel our goals. We cancel our plans because it's not going the way we want it to, whether it's, it's because of inactivity or because we're, we're bored with it or it's not happening the way we want it to. We will, in essence, be like, Bloop, I'm hanging up on you. You are canceled. I've, I've canceled on myself because I don't like what's happening or it's not happening as quick as I want it to be. Uh, you know, the, what I read was that just as we're getting in the groove of whatever we're doing, the moment we meet adversity, we're ready to quit. If we're no longer entertained, we're out. If we're, if we're challenged hard enough, we're out. You know, and it's just like this school year, that the season didn't happen the way you expected, and so you, you, you quit. The, the, uh, the school year hasn't, hasn't dropped the way you expected it to. The, the, your plans, your summer plans didn't happen the way you wanted it to. The rhythm of life did not drop the beat the way you wanted it to, and guess what you said? I'm out. In essence, I've essentially called it canceled. Well, I want to give you this. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we, what are you going to do? Are you going to cancel or are you going to continue? I implore you and for the sake of the title of this message to stay in 
the groove. And instead of being distracted by the detours of life, I want to challenge you to keep moving. Can you keep moving? Your, your goal hasn't changed, just the, the road. You've had some detours in life. And, and what you must realize is that where you're going has not moved, just the method for how you're getting there, the road to how you're getting there has become a little different. Your goal hasn't changed. The, the goal of college, the goal of, of a career in sports, your goal of business, your goal of having a successful senior year, junior year, or whatever school year you're in, the goal has not changed. Just the road or the path to get there has changed. And what you must realize is what's more important, where you're going or the road that gets there. Catch this, catch this. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 11. I want to challenge you to do not quit or to cancel pursuing what God has for you. You haven't opened or received the full package. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 11. I'm going to read it for you here. It says, so now finish doing it as well, so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. The New Living Translation puts it this way. Now you should finish what you started. Let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. Give in proportion to what you have. Here what's happening is Paul is talking about giving and he's talking to the, the church at Corinth. He's talking about the Corinthians, about the Macedonians and how although they are, are known to not have much, to be in a place of lack, that, that did not cause them to quit giving. That even though they didn't have everything, they still gave something. Although they they're, they're, they're physically did not look like they had enough, they still used what they had to give and God blessed them because of it. And, and, and here Paul is telling the church at Corinth that they should still give generously out of what they have because God has blessed them generously. Have you, have you ever noticed or been in the situation where you ordered something and then when you got it, you, you, you no longer wanted it because you did not like the packaging? You, you, the, the packaging looked one way, and so because you did not like the package, you were then saying, I don't want what's happening on the inside. Because of the condition of the package, you questioned the quality of its contents. True story. Uh, uh, some, sometime this summer around my birthday, I decided I wanted a certain pair of shoes. So I went to the Nike website. I, I, I got up early that morning. I had my credit card ready because I knew that this was a desired shoe and that, that if I didn't order it on time, that I would not get the shoe. So I sat there. I waited. I had my phone in one hand. I had my, my credit card in the other hand. And when the time turned for, for me to buy the shoes, I immediately put my credit card in and I won the shoes. And I was so excited. I was elated to get these shoes. Well, uh, over time, they, they shipped the shoes. And when the shoes came to my house, would you believe it? The box came damaged. And I was upset. Here I had paid all this money for these shoes. I had, had all these expectations for these shoes. But when I got them in my possession, because I did not like the box, I then became despondent about its contents. Can I tell you this real quick? Don't be discouraged about what's happening because of what it looks like. We, just because the outside doesn't look good doesn't mean that what's happening on the inside isn't still good for you. I knew I had ordered a specific pair of shoes. I knew I wanted those shoes, but I got discouraged because I didn't like the box watch this watch this in second corinthians chapter 8 verse 11 the first part of it is says so now so now here we are in a situation called now and my challenge is what will you do with now the school year doesn't look the way you wanted it to the beginning of the, the season in sports doesn't look the way you wanted it to. The summer didn't happen the way you wanted it to. And so my question is, so now what will you do? Just because the packaging doesn't look right, you're still in the midst of it. So now what are you going to do? I'll I, I give you this. There was a cartoon, a movie called um, The Little Dinosaur. And, and it's funny about this is that there's this pterodactyl in the story, and they called him Thunderclap because of how the storm caused his life to change. And he makes this statement. He says, look what the storm provided. What we must understand is that our storms not only come in and they, and they, they seem to, to bother us, but what they also do is they clear some things out. Uh, Air Thomas puts it this way. He says that eagles use the storm to reach unimaginable heights. 
that we can look at our storms as a part as a problem or we can use them as a promoter to where we want to be it's what will you do with your storm although the packaging doesn't look the way I want it to the challenge is what will I do with it how will I be something based on what happened in this situation the Bible says that I will glory in tribulation the Bible then also says that I will be thankful in all things not for all things why because I realize that what I'm in is taking me to where I'm going because where I'm in is not where I'll stay but where I'm in is helping me to become where I will be watch this I I also like when I was reading Eric Thomas says this he says cry if you must he says rest if you must but get up and get a reward for your pain get up and get something for what you're going through don't just go through it just to go through it get a reward for it cry if you must if you got to go in your room and be mad about it if you got to be upset at the fact that you're on virtual school and you you're mad the fact that you shouldn't travel this summer that's fine cry about it but after you're done crying get up and do something about it if you want to complain about it go ahead and complain about it if you want to take a nap about it that's fine cry if you must rest if you must but get up and get what is right Rightfully yours. I want to challenge you. My first point is this. Stay in the groove physically. Don't let someone or something move you from what belongs to you. I was ready to not enjoy my shoes because I didn't like the package. Let me give you this, man. Stay in the groove. You know what you wanted, and it's still yours, even if the package it comes in is not what you expected it to be. Here's, here's point number two. We look back at 2 Corinthians 8. It says, now finish what you've started. And then it says, let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. Right? You, you, when you went to high school, your whole thing was, I can't wait to graduate. When you went into high school, you said, I can't wait to get a, a scholarship for football or, or at whatever athletic it is. When you went to the wherever you are, you had these plans and you had this eagerness to do it. And although it doesn't look the way you wanted it to look, you can still get something from it. Let me give you this, and I've told you this many times before, is that, that you must uh, make your effort match or supersede your eagerness or your, your excitement, that you must continue to... To put forth the effort, the same effort you had when you decided you wanted to do it must continue all the way through it. If you feel like quitting, remember why you started. If you really wanted it, if it's something you truly desired, if you have the emotion to quit, remember why you started. In the second part of 2 Corinthians 8, he tells them, let your eagerness match now what it was, what it was then. My second point is you have choices understand that any big dream comes with big challenges and if it makes you feel like quitting then you know you're in the right space because the bible talks about that we can do all things through christ who strengthens us and and our big dreams come with big challenges but guess what guess what big dreams big challenges are no problem for our big god here's my second part of that is it's easier to make an excuse than it is to make a decision. It's easier to make an excuse than it is to make a decision. Here's a, another story, which is crazy. Is once again, me and this, this, this summer pandemic and being stuck at the home, I've been buying shoes. But I, there was a certain pair of shoes that I wanted, and I, I, I found the shoe online, and I, I called the store. It was a store uh, up towards Dallas, and I said, hey, do you have the shoe? The, the guy on the phone answered, it, hello. I said, yeah, man, I, do you have the shoe that I want? He says, well, uh, not in my store, but we have it online. I said, okay, well, if I order it online, can you make sure it gets shipped to me? He said, man, well, you know, because of the COVID, uh, yeah, I don't know. It might take a little while. I said, okay, well, can you call another store and see if they have the store, if they have the shoe in, your, in their store? You know what he told me? He said, no, nah, man, I, I can't call another store. You know, because of the COVID, you know, we, we, we can't do anything. And I, I began to question, it, did the COVID kill the internet? No, what happened was he was making excuses because he did not want to make the effort. Understand this. There's always going to be something that's going to impede your progress, but you must desire where you're going more than what's stopping you from getting there. Realize this. The Bible says the thief come not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Just because you have big dreams does not mean you won't have big opposition. Your desire to get there must supersede the desire of others to stop you from getting where you want it to be. Just because God God gave you the dream doesn't mean that there are people that don't want your dream to come true. You've got to keep going and dismiss 
the excuses. And guess what? I got that shoe. I found it somewhere else. Uh, let me give you this too. The world isn't against you. You are against you. Don't be sorry. <laughs> be helpful. We must begin to talk to ourselves. There's so many times I've had to tell myself, you can do this. I, I, it's, it's, it's obvious, man. This is hard for everybody. Don't think just because I read my Bible and I love God and I, I study God's word that I'm not tempted to quit, that I'm not tempted to give in sometimes, but it's in those moments that I have to look myself in the mirror. And, and you know what's interesting is that we can see everything on our body except our face. <laughs> so we have to get in the mirror and we have to talk to ourselves and say, listen, you've got this. This is not the end. You are the head and not the tail. You can accomplish these things. You can finish these things. And, the, and just as David had to encourage himself, I'm telling you in this season, despite what it looks like, you've got to look at yourself and say, God is in me. And understand this. You were never meant to be average. You were born great. You're not good. Let me tell you that again. You're not good. You are great. You are better than great because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want to challenge you in that. My second point was real simple is, is, is this, is that you have you have choices. So the second one is simple. Stay in the groove emotionally. Here's, here's the third one. Here's the third one. When, when, when in 2 Corinthians 8, 11, the last part of it, it says, it says, give in proportion to what you have, right? They were talking about giving, but even in life, in the effort that you're giving, he says, give in proportion. My last point was do what you can and grow up. Do what you can and and grow up. When, when, if you go all the way to the New Testament, you look in the book of Matthew, we find the story of Jesus. You know the story. The Bible says that he fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. And after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says that he went into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil or by the enemy. And the Bible also says that after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, that he was hungry. Right? It makes sense. You have not eaten for 40 days and 40 nights. Of course, you are hungry. Well, Jesus goes into the wilderness. He's tempted. And, and, and watch what happens. Watch what happens. In, in Matthew 4, verse 3, the, 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 the enemy tells him this. He says, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. At this point, he's on the ground level. Right? And then in Matthew 4, 5, the enemy comes to him again. He says, then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you're the son of God, jump off. Watch. So what happens is he went from the ground to now a high point, right? So he's being elevated, right? And the, and the, and the enemy tempts him again. Then in Matthew 4 and 8, the, he says this. He says, next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Verse 9, it says this, and I will give it all to you. He said, if you will kneel down and worship me. It was as if every time he was elevated, every time he got a little bit higher, the enemy began to tempt him again. You went from, you, you may have survived some things in, in, in junior high. You may have survived some things as some freshman. You survived some things as a junior. And, 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 and as you've gotten to these new levels, you've gotten new challenges, you've gotten new obstacles, you've gotten new, 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 new uh, circumstances to deal with. And just because you are going through things means that, doesn't mean that our Father in heaven doesn't have a son, Jesus Christ, that went through things as well. We, we find in Hebrews, the Bible says that, we, that he understands our pain because he was tempted just as we are. Here's my point with that. We're constantly going to be coming up against some sort of opposition or something that's trying to slow us or retard us or, or, or cause us to have a hard time getting where we're going. Here, Jesus, he, he, at the ground level, he was being tempted. As, as he got higher, he was being tempted. And even as he got to his highest point, he was being tempted again. But watch what Jesus does. At each level came greater temptation and potential opportunity, but Jesus answered sufficiently for each circumstance. He dealt with the challenge at his level and remained faithful to his belief. At ground level in Matthew 4, 4, he says, man does not live by bread alone. As he got to that second point in Jerusalem in 4, 7, he says, you must not test the Lord your God. And then even at the highest point in Matthew 4, 9, he says, you must 
worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Every time he answered with the word of God, every time he was in an uncomfortable place, he answered with the comforting word of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must get that into our spirit that even though we don't like the circumstances, we must return our frustration of the circumstance with our faith that can only be found in the word of God. We've got to eat this Bible. We've got to consume the word of God so that when circumstances and uncomfortable places show up, we can, we can, we can fight it with the with with the power of the word of Jesus Christ with with the words that are in our Bibles here's the last thing that I want to say my first one we talked about staying in the groove physically the second one was staying in the groove emotionally my third one is stay in the groove spiritually here's here's the here's the end here's the end um, I don't know if you guys are are Twitter fans or, or, or YouTube fans and hear me on this. Hear me on this. My, my whole thing was, guys, stay in the groove. Stay in the groove. What, what do you mean stay in the groove? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit older. I'm, I'm 41. No secrets. But when I was younger, my, 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 my dad and my, my, my uncles, they would always use this, 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 this 44 or this, this vinyl record. And when they would play these songs, the way you could hear the song is they would, it had this needle. And the needle had to stay in the groove, and as long as the needle was in the groove, you could hear the music, you could, you could enjoy the music, but the needle had to stay in the groove. Well, recently, these two twin brothers have this YouTube show, and, and they, were, they were listening to this song by Phil Collins, right? And as they were enjoying this song by Phil Collins, the story says that uh, uh, they were listening to it, and, 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 when, and, they would, and, and it was grooving, right? They were beating on their chest. They were like, okay, this is nice. It was, it was this nice, easy groove, and they were enjoying it, and, and they would stop every now and then, and they would kind of dialogue about it. They were like, man, this is a nice groove, right? And then three minutes into the song, watch this, three minutes into the song, you know the song, I can feel it coming in the air tonight, right? They, for the first three minutes of the song, the beat, doesn't drop but they kept listening they stayed in the groove they they, they said I'm going to enjoy this groove because I feel like something is going to happen as soon and, and I want to tell you wherever you are to stay in the groove there's this sense and if you've ever heard that song there's multiple times where you feel like oh here's where it's going to happen oh here's where it's going to happen but it doesn't happen quite yet and sometimes we feel like that as believers that that God is about to drop something heavy onto our lives that the miracle's about to happen but don't quit because it hasn't happened yet because I want to challenge you to stay in the groove because Oh, when the beat hits, if you look back at the video, three minutes into the song, the beat hits and them boys lose it. God is about to do something in your life and you're going to lose it like never before. He's about to show up and show out in your life and do better than you imagined. But you've got to stay in the groove. The package doesn't look good, but I don't care about the package. I care about the contents. I know the storm is harassing me, but I'm in the midst of the storm and God is there with me. I know the school year doesn't look like I want it to, but I'm in the midst of it. And if God is with me, God is for me. I know that the, the football season doesn't look like you wanted it to, but guess what? You're in the midst of it and God's hand is on your life. So if you would just stay in the groove, the beat is going to drop. The moment is going to happen and it will be better than you thought it would be. Stay in the groove, he, he has something waiting for you on the other side. And as you get to new higher levels, continue to trust him. Continue to speak his word. Continue to believe him because he's got something ready. And when the beat drops, it's going to be worth it. Man, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time we've shared today. God, we have so many things that can pop us out of the groove and, and cause us to be uncomfortable. We may not like the way it looks, and we have this cancel culture mentality where we'll cancel others. But more importantly, God, we tend to cancel our own selves too quickly. So God, today, remind us to stay in the groove. Because God, what you have for us is better than imaginable. Help us to stay the course, to be persistent. God, you even said where that the trying of our faith produces endurance. So, God, you are stretching us because you are preparing us for the blessing that we need. So we thank you for this season. Encourage us to stay in the groove. Your word says, wait on the Lord. And again, I say wait. We're waiting because we know that it's worth it in the end. We thank you. We bless you. We will continue to stay in the groove. Continue to push for the promise and trust you in the midst of it all.
Listen, it would, I would be remiss if we had spent all this time together and I have not offered you a relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm not that preacher that believes in scaring you into heaven, but I do want to offer you a friendship, a best friendship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says if you openly declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you're saved. And you just make that declaration with me right now. Say, Jesus Christ, come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I believe that you are Lord, and I believe that God raised you from the dead. I want to be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, that's what you have to do, but that's not the end. The next part is living it out day by day by digging into your word and spending time with him on a regular basis. You want to know more information? Reach us at Rock TFOP. We'll see you next week.